How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf and uh, today is just a messing around clip. I just wanted to uh, do a more chilled video. Do a little lap with my loafs, see how many I can fit on all these trailers and get a bit of a bit of a bakery train going. So uh, first things first, I won't do every loaf but three loafs on a trailer, two loafs on a dolphin, just add winch, OG loaf and coca loaf on Mark II dolphin. Fits pretty nicely. That's definitely what she said. Didn't get a roof rack on uh, OG loaf, but we got plenty of roof racks. Reversing like a pro. Another trailer, another three loafs. Not got a roof rack on that back one either. I mean, behold, we robbed a bakery store and we got ourselves a caterpillar loaf. So, three loafs per dolphin, three loafs per trailer. Uh, how many have I got? One. Oh, I've got 12 loafs, but I was just looking. One, two, three without um, roof racks. So I've got nine roof racks. So, what's that? About 2,700 repair points and just over 1,000 litres. However, one loaf down. You jumped ship early. But. See, in the long run, he just sacrificed himself for a good cause because he doesn't have a roof rack. So, he knew. He knew weight gains. So now, we've got 11 loafs. And just in case you're wondering, when you've got 11 loafs in a group, they're called a spinal tap of loafs. That's just the collective noun. Where can you go from there? Where? I don't know. Nowhere, exactly. What we do is if we need that extra push over the cliff, you know what we do? Put it up to 11. 11, exactly. One louder. Why don't you just make ten louder and make ten be the top number and make that a little louder? These go to eleven. See? Can't argue with that kind of logic. It's the kind of logic you can take to the bank. That's the kind of logic, if you're getting married, it's like, never mind, do you, Mr. Lone Wolf? Does potential Mrs. Lone Wolf get the concept that going up to eleven is always better than going up to ten, even if you make ten louder? Otherwise cancel the whole thing. If not, Vicar, you may proceed. Jobs are good and So yeah, got ourselves a spinal tap of loafs with a double dolphin and some trailers. Oh, what could possibly go wrong? I admit, we are a little wider than usual. Got some loaf handles, but it's all good. In high gear, cruising along just fine. Not bad, considering there is, um, yeah, 11 loafs. <laughs> 11 loaves and a dolphin being towed along. So we get to the ice. I wasn't going to go right through the ice. More because uh, they'll probably like just bounce off more than regardless of getting stuck. It possibly wouldn't get stuck because Mark II dolphin will be pushing on the trailer. But yeah, they'd probably bounce around. I have to say though, putting them in the sideboard like this actually worked out pretty nicely. Because, yeah... Originally, I could only get 10 loaves on, but I had 11 loaves, and then I went and bought another one because, you know, treat myself to a loaf every now and then. And, um, yeah, I found a way. Hanging them out sideways, generally, I didn't try it the opposite way, but I would say <laughs> putting it in from the front is better. That's definitely what she said. Um, yeah, I reckon because, like, the engine and the weight and whatever, they just sit better nose first into the sideboard. And, I mean, well, we'll see. Who's the first loaf to bail? Who's going to jump ship first? Never mind women and children. It's every loaf for himself out there. <laughs> to be honest, it's, like, it's all well and good saying, yep, women and children first when you're sat on dry land, but if you're on a sinking ship, I don't know, might be fucking cannonball off the top deck, and bam, straight onto the first fucking lifeboat that touches water. That evening, ladies. The bad news is, I think I just split my arsehole in half. The good news is, I know how to row a boat, so... Unless you've got a petrol strimmer and a desk fan. Pass me an oar. I'm just joking, of course. But to be honest, if I had the choice between a tiny little lifeboat bobbing around in 50-foot waters full of hysterical women and children or a sinking ship, <laughs> I'll take me fucking chances on the sinking ship. It's not, it's not good manners. It's just the desire to die in peace. If you did a cross-section of the Titanic as it was going down, I bet it would have been like 700 men in the bar. Complete silence. Just enjoying one last sip of the good stuff before they get down, thinking, it's a shame really, shame there's a hole in this ship. 
things were just starting to look up. Turning out to be a nice, peaceful fucking poker cruise weekend or something, but nope. Someone had to go and stick a hole in the ship. Anyway, other than, like, the whole good manners thing, to be fair, which lifeboat would you rather be on? <laughs> one of the first ones launched, full of women and children, or one of the later ones launched, but are full of, like, <laughs> rowing age men? <laughs> I know which one I'm fucking choosing. I'm making it to New York. I mean, just remember to grab a few glasses, a couple of drinks, have a nice little time, like a little lifeboat stag do, <laughs> go rowing around, trying to pick some ladies up, <laughs> like, oi oi, fancy meeting you here, do you row here often? I'm like, oh hang on, the kid's on board like now, keep rowing mate, the fucking babysitting, see us row off into the fog, <laughs> about a minute later, you just hear, oi oi, fancy meeting you here, do you row here often? God loves a try, you see. And there's probably nothing better than being stranded in the middle of the ocean to help a chat up line go down well. I mean, if you're, having, if you're struggling in your marriage, don't renew your vows. Just book a cruise and scuttle the ship. You'll be fucking friends forever by the end of it. This is the shit they don't tell you in school. Fortunately, one of us is prepared to talk about it. Taking one for the team. Anyway, packed all the loaves back on. OG loaf fell off but again it was another one without a roof rack so it was kind of not the worst thing but yeah anyway I brought the crane along I repositioned them all and I started heading towards the cliff you know speaking of an actual <laughs> sunken ship I was there uh, reading or hearing about this or whatever the other month there's a ship in England and it's in like the Thames estuary and um, basically years ago because of bad weather it kind of moored up but for one reason or another like miscommunication it ended up hitting a sandbank and uh, the thing was full of explosives and it like the weight of the explosives on the ship coupled with the, when it got damaged when it hit the sandbank it split the ship in half and it sank and I believe I, sh I, I think there was something around 2,000 tons of high explosives on it but I believe they cleared some up so I believe there's now 1,400 tons left on this ship that's sat just like off the coast of England. Not even off the coast, like you can easily see this ship. You could swim to it from the shore, like it's probably less than half a mile from the shore. Um, and yeah, there's still 1,400 tons of high explosives on it. Which, to put that into perspective, I believe the Moab... The American, like, mother of all bombs, but I think it's called, like, a massive ordnance airburst. It's like the largest non-nuclear weapon that the US has, which, let's be honest, <laughs> it's probably pretty massive. They do like their, uh, their high explosives. Um, yeah, that's ten tons. And then the Russians have made a bomb called the father of all bombs. I'm not sure what that stands for. Possibly sometimes some type of ordnance airburst thing. But, again, that's about 40 tons or something or 44 tonnes, so this ship that's just sat, like, off the beach of an English seaside town is about 40 or 30 or 40 times the size of a Russian FOAB and about 140 times the size of an um, American MOAB. And, yeah, they basically, <laughs> some British experts, discussed it and decided, like, the best thing to do is it probably won't go bang, so just leave it like it's not worth not worth the effort and they might make it go bang while trying to clear it up but yeah there's a lot of people that live around there like the whole town there's even like a gas storage plant nearby whichever genius decided to build that because I'm pretty sure I don't know how long the ship's been there but I don't think it's been there two years I think it's been there like a good decade or possibly more but yeah if it goes bang It'll be one of the largest non-nuclear explosions in history. And it'll wipe out, like, the local town, just obliterate it. Which is pretty crazy. But, yeah, pretty pretty mad that they're just uh, <laughs> going to leave it. It seems like the safest option. I believe on top of that, though, there's, like, two and a half thousand cluster bombs that could go through the deck of the ship and land on the explosives. So it all sounds pretty, pretty iffy, if you ask me. My advice would be just... I don't know, invite North Korea over. My videos don't make it to North Korea, so I can say that. Invite them over, change the maritime maps, let them ram into it, send them the bill. Jobs are good and 
As you can see though with the loaves, funny enough, this loaf kind of fell off, was hanging on for dear life, did some weird little loop, sat on the back of the trailer and now it's hanging on to the sideboard. The blue loaf in the background basically did the same thing. We've lost quite a few loaves now, if I'm honest. Going down that track was not good for, not good for them. It'd be nice if there was some kind of like this ramped flatbed, but with sideboards, but it still had a ramp. It'd be uh, pretty cool, because then they'd all stay on like easily. I mean, to be fair, they do stay on pretty well, but... Do you know what? I notice now, though, and I, I'm sort of... Yeah, just while I've uh, noticed it again. Like, as you can see, the Mark II Dolphin is ramming into the trailer to the point where it just tips sideways and tip that uh, loaf off. But, basically, that Dolphin is travelling a bit faster than mine at the minute, and I'm obviously driving this one, and that's where I believe it kind of shows where I was saying mechanics that are specifically to like limit trucks like I reckon I'm being imposed with some kind of slight restriction nothing crazy I'm not like complaining I'm just sort of saying this is what I noticed whereas the dolphin that is kind of being driven by the computer and doesn't necessarily need you know human well restrictions on a human driven truck it's just doing it itself it's like it's got all the power and it's like, obviously, it ends up going through that mud a bit better than me. Which was basically what was causing my trailer to, like, tilt up at a weird angle and I, uh, obviously, one of the loaves fell off. So, yeah, I just noticed that. It was just something I thought I'd uh, mention. To be honest, that's why quite a lot of the time it's pretty good to take tandem vehicles. Like, when I took um, those two loaves across the rift map... They were insanely good as a pair, because every time the first one slowed down, the second one just had, like, plenty of power, and it was, yeah, just like a little little loaf train winched in the middle, and, uh, like I said, it was like an eight-wheeler eight -wheeler loaf. And I went all over the place. I was driving through rivers, I was driving through the big boggy mud bits, I was driving up rocks that were about as tall as the loaf, all sorts of crazy stuff. Once you're uh, doing tandem trucks, obviously they don't have to be identical trucks, but... I'd say for the sakes of it, it probably helps. I think. Obviously, having two of the same, it's uh, whatever you're getting in this one, it seems to be like still a little bit more when the computer's driving the other one. So anyway, we're here. Like I said, I'm going to take the whole thing this time. I'm not going to uh, split them in half. I thought for a second I was the trailer, like some something was hooked in the middle, but it wasn't. It was Mark II Dolphin was hooked on the tree. So uh, yeah, here we are, like I say, pretty, running pretty low on loafs, but I think I've still got one left. I'm going here now. I'm steering full lock, and for whatever reason, I've not really seen it do that before, but I just started sliding, like understeering basically. Possibly because the dolphin behind is just ramming the trailer, and it was just, yeah, making me like understeer rather than uh, make it around the corner. So I disconnected the winch for a second, winched myself onto the tree. Had a little wiggle around just to get my uh, nose back around. That's all I needed. So, I'll have another go. Here we go, loaves hanging onto the sideboard. He's a professional. That's why you get yourself a loaf. Still got one uh, repair kit left. Or repair kit, whatever it's called. <laughs> At this point, like, oh, I don't know. Just sod it. Floor it, fingers crossed, hope for the best. Is it going to make it? I mean, look at the goddamn pulse of a vehicle. Doing a Grand National jump off the cliff. It's mocking the cliff, that's what it's doing. I don't know what happened, but it decided. It wanted to break free. Oh yeah, to be fair though, I did make it. The whole the dolphin train. Not quite the bakery train anymore, but... Yeah, I was pretty happy at this part. I genuinely thought the Dolphin, like the Mark II Dolphin, was going to fall off. I mean, even the loaf, I'm giving that a pass because it didn't fall down. It just jumped, jumped up in the air and started laughing at the cliff. I brought this loaf just to have a look at it. Went to, I wasn't even really paying attention. Just looked back at that. Like, Shit. Put a winch on. Have a little look. Have a little look at the floating loaf. There's all my uh, previous trailer attempts down there. I mean, look at him. The time of his life. <laughs> I was trying to do a backflip 
Well, every time I held the winch down, it kept lifting me up a bit, so as you can hear, I'm just doing like the winch on and off. I was seeing if I could get enough momentum to try and flip myself up a bit, but it kept stopping about now, so it's good times. Good times while it lasted, but yeah. Of course, does that mean? What do you do? What do we do with a loaf? I believe I recovered the first dolphin and I rolled the second dolphin. Got to cut her loose. Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> that's why you get yourself a goddamn professional. So the loaf don't let you down. You got shit to do. You got stuff to investigate. You don't have to worry about giant snow hills. And of course, there's loafs. Loafs dotted all along the way, but see. Goddamn horse of a vehicle. I didn't mean to switch to this one. I was going to leave it up there, just let it remain. But yeah, I accidentally uh, double clicked and it happened to be this one. And yeah, as soon as you choose it, it drops out of the sky. That's what happened with my Don 71. Like I said, it always seems to select that one first for some reason, whichever one's floating in the air. It's like it lists the vehicles based on which one is higher or something. I don't know. <laughs> but it seems to select a lot of stuff that's in the air at the end. Um, White Valley map. But yeah, anyway, I recovered all my loaves. Like I said, 12. I will be buying more. <laughs> Can't help myself. But yeah, it was a pretty good night. Like I said, pretty much all of them flipped themselves. The rest had a mate nearby. I took this beast out and uh, had a bit of a lucky escape. What a goddamn beast. Some things are just born loaf professional, but other things, they need a little bit of encouragement, but they get there in the end. We've been loaf training it. It's loaf trained. That's what happens. So when the ice knows who's boss, and it flicks you back up on your wheels. And now, I have to say actually, I've been doing this. This is a nice little thing to drift <laughs> when you can get on this sort of ice. Swung it that way. It's coming back this way, but I clipped the uh, like the white patch of snow that was yeah like in between the two bits of blue ice. So it didn't quite go. Sent it for another one. Again, if we can find the nice big fat patch of uh, blue ice, we'll go pretty well. That was about it though. I was climbing up this rock. Fancy giving it a go. Um, again, if it had chained, it'd bite in a little better. But I have to say, considering because this thing's pretty damn heavy, it does make up for the lack of grip muds give you on that kind of like an icy rock, basically. Yep, <laughs> fell off the edge. I knew I probably would. But I was basically bringing everything in for the night. So, uh, yeah, it was my little five minutes of fun. Went and drowned a derry. What more could you ask for? So, like I say, that's about it for today, though. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon. I mean, look at it. I'm a goddamn professional.